Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making a southern tomato pie. I've never made a tomato pie before, um, but we're going to be making a southern tomato pie. And I got this recipe from a website called Grits and Pine Cones, which sounds like a terrible combination no matter what the circumstances are. But we're going to try it. It says that Easy Southern Tomato Pie is a savory classic full of fresh summer tomatoes and melted cheddar and Parmesan cheese. It also has a rich buttery crust made with a surprise ingredient, Ritz crackers. Or, as we're going to do today, naturally flavored buttery rounds baked crackers because these were way cheaper than Ritz. And they look the same, so we're using great value buttery rounds in our recipe. Now we're going to be using these for the crust of our potato, our, our, not a potato pie, a tomato pie. So it says that this is an easy recipe with a prep time of only 15 minutes. You need four tomatoes, large tomatoes, or five to six medium tomatoes. Now for this recipe, I did go to the farmer's mar market and I wanted to see if they had any good tomatoes yet. I found a, a few. I found these two. These are Cherokee purple tomatoes, which are my favorite. Um, they didn't have many though. It's a little early in the season for, you know, really big tomatoes. And as, but as we go on into summertime, the tomatoes get much bigger and better. Um, to me, the uglier they get, the better they taste, and it looks like a tumor. Look at that one. Yes, they taste good. They did have some that were grown in a greenhouse. They have some of their greenhouse tomatoes. Now, they're not as good as the ones grown outside, but, you know, as I said, it's a little early for the home, you know, the ones grown outside, the homegrown tomatoes. Um, but these are good, too. These are pretty. Look how big they are. I bought five great big tomato or four great big tomatoes like this and I bought some extra so I could have a tomato sandwich later. This is another Cherokee purple and it has a little bit of a different color to it and it, it has a bit of a different taste to it. To me they're, they're a little bit sweeter and they're very juicy. So I think we have enough tomatoes here. You need four tomatoes. You need eight ounces of grated sharp cheddar cheese, which is two cups, according to this. And I have here eight ounces of great value sharp cheddar cheese, uh, shredded, two cups. So we're going to need the whole bag for this pie. We also need a half a cup of mayonnaise. I have my Dukes, because <laughs> that's the only kind that we use. I come from a, a Dukes family. We have our Dukes mayonnaise there. You need that. You need Dijon mustard. And I really splurged on this. I spent 92 cents on this great value Dijon mustard made with white wine. It did not come with the Rolls Royce. I just imagined two Kia Sportages pulling up to one another and passing this through the window. Great value. 92 cents. We need a third of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. This is finely shredded Parmesan that I found at Walmart. This is great value, uh, and I, do, I don't want to grate it myself, so I just went ahead and got this bag. This was $2.22. It's a total of six ounces. It's way more than we need, so I'll probably be using the rest of it for something else. Um, you also need ground black pepper. I have my uh, ground black pepper here. This is from Aldi. And then you have the cracker pie crust. Now it also says you can use a, a pre-made crust. You just want to stick it in the oven and kind of brown it before you add your filling. You need one and a half cups of crushed Ritz crackers or buttery rounds. That is approximately 45 crackers. You also need five tablespoons of unsalted butter and two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. So we're gonna have the Parmesan cheese in the filling and the crust. Yummy. All right, so the first thing we have to do is get started on the crust. We start this step with a bag. 
Now, the, in, the instructions do say that you are supposed to crush up the crackers with a food processor, but that's not the fun way to do it. The fun way to do it is to put it in a bag, put the, put the crackers in a bag, and it said we were going to need about 45 crackers. It also didn't say what size pie pan you need. I bought some of the aluminum pie pans that are 10 inches. Um, if that's not big enough, I can just use the extra in, a, in the other pans because it came with two pans. So, Okay. So we're going to put them in here. And we're going to go over them with a roller. <laughs> that's more fun than the food processor anyway. years counting pills as a pharmacy tech just paid off okay so you have your little rounds in here your little crackers now don't forget to close this or when you roll over it they're going to come spitting out this way and it will be very unfortunate mm. so you can do this with a roller you could do it with a hammer or a meat tenderizer you just want to you just want to beat them up. You just want to crush your crackers. You just want to make them into crumbs. Well, that was loud and especially jarring, but this is what it looks like when you crush up 45 buttery rounds into crumbs. That's 45 buttery rounds. Aren't they pretty? Okay, so we've prepared our crackers. The next thing we have to do to make the crust is combine our Parmesan cheese and melted butter in our bowl. And first, I have to show you my bowls. I can't go any further without that. Here we have four nesting mixing bowls. Aren't they lovely? These are from Zach Designs, C-A-K exclamation point. I found these at a, uh, an antique store, but they're not really antiques but they're so colorful and pretty um this is the smallest one we i really need to use this one sometime we almost never use these two um yeah i think for this one we're gonna go with the lime green one right here let's use that one most of the time we end up using the largest one but today I think we'll go with the green one. Right. So we have our crumbs. The next thing we do is we're going to put our crumbs into the bowl. to do this in a food processor but I, I don't actually own a food a food processor so we're just gonna do this by hand you want to add your melted butter this is five tablespoons of melted butter put that in there okay and two tablespoons of our Parmesan cheese and we're going to mix all that together. You want to thoroughly coat those crumbs with the melted butter. It smells good. 
good already. <laughs> you can smell the butter mixed with the, the buttery rounds. Very nice. Okay. Now I did just notice in the instructions that it did say to use a nine inch pie pan for this. I didn't see that before, but I have a 10 inch pie pan. This one, this pie pan came from Easy Full and I wanted this to be one that could just be disposed of after I was finished because I am going to be giving this away. So we have an Easy Full pan. Now we're going to put our crumbs into the pan. says you can use your hand or the bottom of a glass to kind of press it into your pan. I'm just using my little mini silicone mixer spatula thing. It also said if you want to, you can modify this recipe any number of ways. You can use different kinds of cheese. You can add bacon bits or, you know, you can play around with it and add all kinds of different things to it. If you wanna make it, you know, a little, a little differently, you can, you can add whatever you like. But for this, for this round, we're just gonna make it the way it is. When I do these uh, cooking videos, I try to stick to the recipe although I didn't buy Ritz crackers. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me for that. The Ritz crackers were about twice the price for the same size box and I just, I don't know, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> like I couldn't bring myself to, to buy them <laughs> because I've had the great value buttery rounds before and they taste exactly the same. They were probably made in the same place. <laughs> A lot of store brands are made in the same place as the name brand stuff. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I just pat it up on the sides. Okay. I'm trying to even it out a little bit. Nice. That has our crust all prepared. Isn't that pretty? But it, it did also say you could use a pre-made crust if you want to. You don't have to make your own if you don't want. Now it does say you want it to go up the sides of the pie pan. And now that we have it ready, you're going to bake this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes or until the crust is a golden brown. So we're going to pop that in the oven. We'll see how it looks when it comes out. Now, while the crust is baking in the oven. You wanna go ahead and slice up your tomatoes. I've already sliced up some. These were the big pretty tomatoes. This is one of my Cherokee purples right here. It's a little different. Uh, my hands are clean. Um, it says to use, let's see, four large tomatoes or five to six medium sized tomatoes. You don't have to blanch them or peel them or anything, but you wanna lay them out it says on here to lay them on a paper towel. I have a couple of layers of paper towels here. You're gonna lay them out on paper towel for at least 20 minutes. You can see how, how different the, the Cherokee purple looks. I love them, they're really good. You wanna lay them out and then blot the tops with another paper towel. You wanna to leave them on here for at least 20 minutes to get as much of that liquid out as possible. So you're gonna lay them out. I'm gonna get some more paper towels for the rest of these, but then you wanna just take paper towels and blot the tops. Just, you're trying to get as much of that moisture out as possible. Um, you could use a regular towel if you don't wanna use paper towels, but to me that just feels kinda, not yet, maybe not yucky, but it, I don't know. I just, I would just rather do it the way the recipe says to do it. 
with the paper towel. So you're trying to remove as much moisture as possible. And here I have another little tray. I'm just going to continue placing my tomatoes on it. Just on top of the paper towel. Like that. I cut some of these as like a whole piece like this one. And I cut some at an angle. Kind of like when I make a tomato sandwich. I want some pieces that are just little sections. Like this one. To fill in the little empty spots on my sandwich that the round pieces don't cover. Okay. And I have plenty more tomatoes if this is not enough. This was, I believe, three large tomatoes and the Cherokee purple. You can see all the seeds in the water that have come out already just from slicing them on this little tray right here. I'll just keep blotting my tomatoes. Now, we're going to let these sit for 20 minutes, just like the recipe says. And I can already see a lot of a lot of the moisture coming out into the paper towel. So that's good. It's working great. And I have the the crust all ready to go too. It's nice and golden brown. Oh, it smells really good. You can smell the butter in there. So I did bake this for 12 minutes on 350. So the, cr the crust is ready. Now we're just going to wait for the tomatoes to drain just a little bit more. While we are waiting for the tomatoes to drain and for the crust to cool, I have to give my ingredients a little bit of love. The first one we have here is Great Value Dijon Mustard. This is made with white wine. It even comes with a serving suggestion on the back with the nutrition facts. Tells you how much a serving is. One serving is a teaspoon of this product. It has this nice elegant flip top lid up here made of plastic. 12 ounces of delicious goodness, yumminess from great value. And the next ingredient that we have is salt. Now this recipe does call for kosher salt. I did not have any of that, but I do have stone mill iodized salt. This salt supplies iodide, a necessary nutrient. It's beautiful, see? We have our salt. This is a 26 ounce container. It comes in this little paperboard container and it has a metal spout at the top. This is an Aldi product. It's a wonderful value. We also have stone mill essentials, whole black pepper in a glass container with a grinder in the top. You just remove the lid and you will see it. A little grinder built into your container for your little peppercorns. The top just snaps back on like that. I'm going to be using Stone Mill Essentials Pepper. This is also from Aldi. Very nice. Our Parmesan cheese today is finely shredded Parmesan cheese from Great Value. We used this product in both the crust and we will be using it on the top of our southern tomato pie. We had this much left over, so I think I'm going to use this in some spaghetti sometime soon. For the filling of this pie, we are going to be using Great Value Sharp Cheddar Shredded Cheese. We are going to use the entire package, which contains two cups of sharp cheddar cheese. Look at the beautiful purple featured on this package. This part is clear, so you can see the cheese. 
And this part down here is the same beautiful shade of purple. It's lovely. And in the middle, we have the Great Value logo here. And in the middle, it states the type of cheese it is. Sharp cheddar. For our crust, we used this butter. Countryside Creamery Sweet Cream Unsalted Butter. Only five tablespoons melted for this recipe. This is an Aldi product. It's a very nice unsalted butter. They also make a salted butter. But this recipe called for unsalted butter. So we melted five ounces of this to go into our crust. All right, our delightful crust has completely cooled. It still smells good. It's nice and cool. So now we are ready to start layering our products. The first thing we're going to do is sprinkle a third of this shredded cheddar cheese on the bottom. And my hands are clean. I'm just gonna drop it in there. So we wanna do about a third of it. Next, we're going to add a layer of tomatoes over top that. They're nice and drained. The recipe did say that it is important to remove as much moisture from the tomatoes as possible, or it could make your pie soggy. And there's nothing worse than a soggy pie. So here we have one layer of tomatoes there and then you're going to sprinkle on a little bit of salt on top of that and your pepper. You put on a layer of salt and pepper over the top or just however much you want. We're going to come back with another layer of cheese. And another layer of tomatoes. Here go the Cherokee purples. Let's spread them out. I don't want them all clumped together. More tomatoes. For a little bit. Let's put this one there. Okay. Oh, I had plenty. I had some. I had a little bit left over. And then we're going to add another layer of cheese. Boy, this pie is going to be tall. It's really going to be something. It says here you should have three layers of cheese and two layers of tomatoes. And we do. Okay. And we have to set this aside for a moment. In the next step, we're going to be mixing together our mayonnaise, Parmesan cheese. If I forgot the salt and pepper on that second layer, well, Tell you what, you're supposed to add salt and pepper to each layer 
I'm gonna just put it on top of the cheese. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> it's all going in the same mouth. What does it matter? And sprinkle the salt on there. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, we're okay, at this point, we're going to do our mayonnaise, parmesan, and our Dijon mustard. Right there. There's the Dijon mustard. And our parmesan. Okay. We're going to mix this together in a small bowl. realized I didn't show you the Duke's mayonnaise. Oh my gosh. I almost forgot my mayonnaise. As it says here on the label, on the lid, Duke's, it's got twang. <laughs> Just like me. It's a family recipe since 1917 and is smooth and creamy. And anytime you ever see me use mayonnaise, it will always be Duke's. I come from a family where everybody uses Dukes. We're very particular about our mayonnaise in the South. You might come from a Dukes family or a Hellman's family or Miracle Whip, but we don't talk to those people. Only the Dukes people. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, but most people do have a preference for their mayonnaise. Okay. So we've mixed together our Parmesan and our Dijon and our mayonnaise. Look at that. Very nice. We are now going to bring back our little pie and we are going to spread this over the top. Somehow. I'm not quite sure how. It does say in the notes that if the cheese gets mixed in with the mayonnaise mixture while you're spreading it. It doesn't matter. It will not matter one bit. In fact, it's pretty much impossible to avoid. <laughs> it's going to happen. And the recipe notes said, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. If you don't do it perfectly, it's fine. You're just trying to spread it around a little bit. I'm just using a little silicone little spatula thing here. Okay. Oops, stay down there, tomato. bake this for 20 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or until the topping is lightly browned and the mixture is bubbly. So let's go bake it and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, it's, it's nice and bubbly and brown. Oh, it looks beautiful. Now keep in mind the recipe did call for a 9 inch pie pan and this is a 10 inch so it's not quite, you know, it doesn't fill all the way up to the edges but I think it still looks really good. Now, the recipe does say that you have to let this cool for at least 35 minutes before slicing into it. It's very hot. It smells really good. Honestly, it kind of smells like spaghetti, I guess because of the, the tomato in it. It smells really yummy. We're going to give it time to cool, and then we're going to slice into it. Alright, our little tomato pie has cooled and I did have to take a couple, I just took a couple of napkins and kind of blotted the top. There was a bit of grease on the top so I just kind of blotted that off. So we're going to cut into this thing. I don't want a whole lot because I'm actually giving this away. So I just want enough to just get a little taste. I'm just using a serrated knife. I just want a little bit. Enough for a taste. 
Now the crust is still kind of crumbly. Okay. Oh, it came out nice. Look at that. Wow. Now we get to try it. Okay, we have our tomato pie. Look at that. Oh, isn't it a beautiful mess? Look at it. It's a beautiful mess. It's a bunch of tomatoes and cheese. Oh my gosh. I mean, look at it. Wow. Mm, it smells really good too. And it was really easy to make. The notes in the recipe also said if you don't have Ritz crackers, you could substitute saltines or cheese crackers. I was also wondering if you can just use like regular bread bread crumbs with the butter and stuff instead of like crackers. I don't know. It might not the texture might not be quite right, but I bet this would be this would be really good with some cheese its like crushed up cheese its in there, or you could do half and half Ritz crackers and half cheese its. That'd be really good too very nice so it was really easy really basic ingredients nothing nothing crazy now it does say that you cannot freeze this because it doesn't freeze too well so unfortunately it does not freeze beautifully but you can keep it in the refrigerator for up to two days but I think it's the kind of thing that you kind of need to you know eat soon or it will get soggy so anyway without further ado I want to try this I, I want to get some of the tomato in the top too. Some of that top stuff. Hmm. I like the topping. I was kind of wondering about that. I wasn't sure I was going to like it. All that mayonnaise. But I like mayonnaise on my, on my tomato sandwiches. So I don't know why I was hesitant to try it actually really good and that little bit of Dijon mustard that's a nice addition as well see it's a beautiful mess it's like a little salad or something mm. and that crust oh that crust is kind of crumbly which maybe I didn't do something quite right I made it the way it said to make it but the crust is a little bit crumbly, but it's really good because it's still kind of crunchy. Mmm. That crunchy crust is so good with the tomatoes and that sharp cheddar cheese. Mmm. It is just, it's wonderful. Mmm. That would be a nice little side dish for dinner. It really would. I ate, I ate it all. I only wanted a little piece because the rest of it is going to Glenda the Good Witch, my current ex-husband. Um, we, we still get along great. And I asked him what he would like if he had any anything in particular. Because I said, I, I want to I do a, a video cooking or baking something. And he said he would like something with either tomatoes or squash, like a casserole kind of thing. So I chose this tomato pie, this southern tomato pie. And it's so good. It's so good. It's such a nice combination of the buttery rounds and the crust there. And then the tomatoes and the cheese. A little bit of salt and pepper sprinkled in it. Although I, I, I think I... I didn't put a lot of salt in there. I'm really glad I didn't put more because you're always you're already going to get that salty taste from the cheese. So I don't really think you need to add as much as the recipe says. I did not add as much as it said to add. But that's just my preference. I think it's the perfect amount of saltiness and the tomatoes were wonderful. So yes, a southern tomato pie made with ingredients that you may already have right now except maybe the tomatoes, but you can get some of those and make this and it's wonderful. Mm. I really did like it. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but I actually think it's very good. 
so thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this beautiful southern tomato pie today. I sure did. And I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I will see you again soon.